Welcome to the Contemporary Guitar Blog YouTube channel. I'm Trevor Babb, and I am joined today by Juan Trigos, another composer mm -hmm. who is featured on my upcoming record, From a Dream, which will be out on Frameworks Recordings on September 2nd, 2022. Juan, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Trevor. It's, it's very nice to be with you. Likewise. <laughs> And the piece that we're talking about today is your 12 Variations in Fugue on the Folia de Spagna. And uh, this is a piece that myself and a number of other guitarists banded together and pooled our money to get you to write this huge piece. It takes up about half of this recording that I'm releasing. And so it's really the backbone of this CD. Um, and the it wasn't me who was leading the charge on this consortium. It was the great Dieter Hennings, who uh, teaches guitar at University of Kentucky. And you and Dieter, uh, I, I met you through Dieter as an undergraduate student at the Eastman School of Music. And you two have had a long friendship, a long um, relationship as performer and composer. Um, let's start by talking about um, you and Dieter and um, your relationship together, um, the ways that you've collaborated in the past, and um, the types of pieces that you've written for him to play. Okay, I met uh, Dieter in 2006, I think, or, or so. Uh, he played the guitar part of uh, another Mexican, Mexican-American composer, Ricardo Son, which you, you know very well too. Uh, we played uh, um, the suite of, of uh, his opera, Comala, and, uh, and we start to, to talk about the, the pieces. And I, I sent it to him, my, my first concert, guitar concerto. And he organized after, so we, we record the piece or play the piece. No, no, we didn't record the piece that, in that period. But uh, he, he told me, uh, I don't know, six months after I sent the, the music, he was organizing a concert to play the ricercare and asked me to come to conduct the piece. No, so basically he played the ricercare and and quartetto da doza, which is another piece with with guitar. It's not for solo guitar; it's a uh, uh, chamber chamber work. No, and and um, since there we we've been collaborating in many in many ways. No, so he uh, I invited him to to play. So he he will, um, um, used to play in the broadband Isman broadband ensemble. So we 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 uh, uh, made a, a lot a lot of uh, concerts and uh, collaborations that way, and he asked me to write uh, the first piece he commissioned me was the partita. But the the, the strange story about partita, he was telling me, please write a, 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 a how you say an encore piece, no? So a short piece for. After the, con the the concerto, no, so it would be nice to have a an encore piece. And I say, Dieter, I don't have the time. Come on, no? and he he was pushing, you know, you know, Dieter, how is it? So and um, okay, I will write the piece. And I started the partita. I didn't know, but the partita it's twenty three minutes or twenty two minutes or something yeah, it's like a huge that. Piece. It, it, it was a, it wasn't a proper, <laughs> but it came like that. And I didn't say a thing, and I sent the score. And silence for I don't know one month or something, three weeks or so. After that, he called me and said, "Are you out of your mind?" Because it's it's really difficult. The piece. It's really difficult for for those of you who aren't familiar with the partita. It's in drop C. Um, it's incredibly complex, and the final movement uses foot pedal cowbell, right? Like yes, it's, it's a serious undertaking, and lots of complex rhythms. Lots of really challenging uh, navigating of open strings and fretted notes on the guitar. It's, it's an incredibly difficult piece. I've looked at it for a little bit, and I was like, "Someday, maybe." You you need to uh, uh, you really need to wa want to play the piece. It's a huge oh, commitment. I, yeah, it's it's a, it's a very well. I like very much the piece. It's very wild in a in a manner. Is uh, is the opposite of the, of the piece you are talking about, the Folia de España. But uh, well, that that uh, uh, that piece we can say start our, our serious collaboration, okay? And um, 
after that, uh, we've been doing a lot of things now, you know, and uh, he he's trying to 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 um, learn uh, to teach the pieces to other guitar players, and uh, I am very grateful for that. So he he put all you guys together to make this uh, consortium, which is a great thing. And uh, well, Peter is a very enthusiastic uh, musician, and he loves to play new music. That's uh, I'm not talking just about my music, but he he plays whatever. No, uh, it's around yeah, there. Yeah, everything. And, uh, Everything. I, I think he, I think he got into new music because he could play all the standard guitar rep and needed other things to do. He needed more mountains to climb. I remember when I was a student, we would I, I would walk by and he's practicing on out in the hallway and he's just burning via Lobos etudes. Which one is this? Quizzing me. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very pretty much like theater. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely yeah. what was going on. He was, and I took history and literature of guitar with him, and the guy just knows all the music. It's yes, and he loves, and, and he's he's uh, doing a terrific job with the repertoire. Yeah, because he's amplifying, no, and it's mm -hmm. very important to yeah. do that. No? Absolutely, it's very important, no, because I, I'm talking about all my colleagues, no, because he's he's trying to commission pieces to the composers and to play more, uh, not forcing, but in um, you know, give give the, the students the, the 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 opportunity to learn about these these new compositions, no? Yeah, I and mean, try and that's, to play. that's really where I kind of caught the new music bug was uh, in a lot of ways through Dieter, because like I said, I was taking the history and literature course with him, and having him coach me playing Terry Riley duos and all this other stuff. And I, I looked up at this guy, like literally up because those of you who don't know Dieter, yeah, he's impossible not to do <laughs> uh, but you know, I looked up to him and said, I, I want to do what this guy does because he's doing some really exciting things with the guitar. And so really like this, this record of new music, um, you know, of composers who I've, you know, worked with, um, it wouldn't exist without Dieter, probably, because he was really someone who set the tone of what the guitar could do for me. Um, we can talk briefly about um, the other players who are in this consortium. Absolutely. We have a couple of Dieter's, um, at the time, students from University of Kentucky, Jeremy Bass and uh, Eric Singh. And then we have Eladio Sharon um ivan it's, it's, trinidad sanchez it's trinidad sanchez and Dieter. No, and Dieter. Course. yeah and it was the five of us and, and right and and me too um and so let's let's just talk briefly about these um these people i mean you and i had met after one of Dieter's concerts at eastman i think when i was a long time really ago young and um you know, we, we had talked, but you and I, you, I mean, I don't think you knew anything about me as a player. And so you, you're writing this piece for six people. Um, how much of these other guitarists did you know about and know about how they played? Because you did, you know, dedicate a, a, vi a variation or two to each one of us. Um, let's just talk briefly about, you know, your contact that you had with the other guitar players on this consortium. Well, for example, let's start with the with the with the Ivan Trinidad. I don't know him personally, so I never met him. No, I know how he plays because I I, I heard him playing. No, he's a, a fantastic guitar player, and um, but he was very enthusiastic to to participate in the in the consortium. No, so uh, probably probably it's, uh, it's a naive thing to say, but. Uh, I dedicate the pieces a little for the personality. I felt uh, listening the, the playing, no. So, but it it is I divided. I don't I don't remember exactly. But for example, I, I remember yours. So the second the second variation, especially I think it it will fit. Uh, so what I was thinking this one will fit perfectly with Trevor. I don't know why. It's not a, a reason, but. Uh, it, it's it's the one uh, probably is the more abstract one, in a manner. Yeah, it, it was funny because when I got the score, I looked at it and I was like, "Yeah, this one is mine," and I, I don't know, I don't really know why. But um, it's intuitive. It's it, you know, it's yeah. like feeling, you no? Know? Right. 
the, the theme and the fugue, it was Dieter because he was the the, the, the yeah, but you know, he was he was the guy who put all together, no? Yeah. So that's the 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 beginning and the ending, no? Yeah, exactly. But it was like that, no? For example, Eladio, he, uh, he teaches. I, I met him in um, in uh, Orlando because I used to live in Orlando mm -hmm. for a while. Because my, when I came to the states in 2010, my father was living there. It was the easiest way to come to to the states, and I met him. He teaches at FIU. No, sorry, and uh, UCF. Okay. If I use Miami, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, UCF. Central Florida. And um, and uh, we we collaborate in a couple of things. And he's a, he's a very, a very cold guy. He he's a very nice guy. He, he's from from uh, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. He has now a, a duo uh, with the flute and guitar. He plays as well around. Uh, then uh, Eric was. Um, he was studying at Chicago University, I think. Uh, or, Northwestern. No, Northwestern. Was, Chicago. Yeah. Yes, you're right. And um, well, you know, Eric, I, I dedicate, I think it's number seven. I remember number seven. Yeah, which is the, his, the, the, one the, the tremolo, the, the quintuple the queen tremolo tuplets. movement. Yeah. The, the, the quintuplets, no? Yeah. And I don't know, but probably yours. So the second one and the seven, it's, it's like, a, you know, very clear to me. To dedicate that one, you know, <laughs> he never asked, but uh, that's that's okay, you know, Eric. And uh, but I yeah. think it uh, it reflects a little the personality, probably. I don't know, it's just an intuitive thing. Um, but uh, we we made a, a couple of things together also in uh, in Northwestern, uh, uh, Trinidad, uh, Eladio. Well, uh, Jeremy, I heard uh, Jeremy play the, the actually, he did the first performance. If I am I'm not right, wrong. he he did. I think he certainly was the first to play any of it publicly. Exactly. I know he did a partial performance at one point. I remember him sending me um, the sort of uh, stripped down version that he did, where he cut some variations um, and and really just refined. Very very accurate. Jeremy has always been an incredibly accurate player. From as long no, as and, and he did a terrific. I think a terrific job, and he he yeah. he got the the courage to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's He's not a... an easy piece. It's a long piece. It takes a lot of time to learn the piece, and I I appreciate it very much. Yeah. So and I think he was the first, and you you the second probably. Right. I played in, it in uh in, Yale, in, in no? rural New Jersey. Oh. Um, as part of a, a concert series that actually the church that my grandmother went to when she was a kid. So it was Incredible. like, it was like, you know, this is like where my family came from. And it was, it was just a really odd place, but they, they called me down for a concert because of my connection with that territory. And um, it was definitely a, a weird piece to play in rural New Jersey. But <laughs> I think that, you know, the, the audience kind of dug it um i'm glad to hear in it. southern jersey yeah it was it was really wild i'm glad to hear it because you know i like very much that piece but i wrote it so it, it's yeah. not valid <laughs> yeah no i mean i've played it a few times and it's it really um is really well received i think um uh, i i i was about to tell you so i i um of course i heard i heard your your uh, cd version but i heard the one in, in Yale, it was very good, actually. I right, remember. yeah, I played it on my doctoral recital, too. Yeah, to, uh, along to the other pieces also, no? Yeah, the yeah, the yeah. Guitar. right. There are but a couple other that. pieces from this recording that were on that same, yeah. same yeah, program. Yeah. yeah, very nice program, actually. Thank you. So, um, you know, we've got a set of variations that closes with a fugue on the Folia de España. We would not be doing our due diligence if we didn't talk about Ponce. Because this is clearly a piece that um, is modeled after the variations and fugue on the folia that Ponce wrote for Segovia. Let's talk just a little bit about that. I'm I'm guessing that was Dieter's idea. Well, but, well, yes, yes, and of course, yes. But the thing is, it's a a piece we talk many times. So he he asked me once a long time ago. 
if I knew that piece, and I say, I, no, I just don't knew, I love that piece. No? Mm -hmm. And he say, interesting, no? Why you love that piece? Because it's really amazing piece. So it's like a, like a composition is incredible. He treats the, the theme in a very unique way, no? Yeah, he really does. No, it's, so the, the, the theme is, is, you, you, is nothing you expect, no? Yeah, Start it's, it's twist, so, no? re the, the theme itself is really a variation on the theme because he reharmonizes it the way that Ponce would harmonize it. So as much as I remember, it starts with the second grade of, of the minor clef, no? Of A minor, second uh -huh. dominant, and then the, 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 the uh, D minor, no? D minor. I, I'll take your word for it. I learned the piece while you were writing this one, and I haven't looked at it in a really long time. Um, I know Dieter's actually played I, I both on the same program, which we'll talk about. I, I remember it, it is the second grade of the minor uh, uh, scale, no? Then the dominant, and, and, and then, but it, it's like, what? Yeah, no? yeah the, those amazing first piece. few chords, you're like, oh, this well, is they, where we're they, going. It has yeah. more, more interesting things, of course, no? But as much yes. as I remember, it is, it is very twisted, but very, very... Uh, sensitive no it's it's very very nice piece not really really a great composition and the other the other situation with ponce it's um you know for the guitar repertoire you know better than me but it's in in in, in the americas complete the the, the entire continent sure we have villa lobos and we have ponce mm -hmm. for the repertoire no we have arios mangore of course no and others but you know the volume of pieces is amazing no we are yeah. talking about probably five or six CDs of, of guitar music, no? Including the concertos, the concerto, yeah. no? Yeah. So he, he uh, you know, it's it's uh, strange because I, I met Ponce, or I start to play Ponce because I'm a pianist. Uh -huh. And he has not double, but a lot more material for piano. He was a, a terrific pianist, no? Yeah. So, uh, 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 and I start to learn about Ponce with my guitar friends. Uh, but you, for, for you guitar players, it's like, uh, you know, like playing Bach, no? It's, no, it's yeah, I mean, yeah, he's he's kind of like our, our Brahms or our, you know, the, kind of like one of those romantic If you times. want to be a guitar player, you need Giuliani, no? So, of yeah. course, Bach, impossible. Giuliani, Bach, uh, what, uh, Targa, probably, yeah. uh, Ponce, Villalobos, uh, yeah. Brauer. It's, yeah, it's another thing, but Brauer also, no? Yeah. And uh, well, I'm not trying to, to you know, Rivali, of course, no, all those concertos, Carulli, what's the other one, famous, but Giuliani, very important. Some, yeah. um, but but the thing he's, is, it's a main the thing for the guitar repertoire. repertoire. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's the other reason it was important to to write this piece, no, because it's it's um um how you say uh, um, a gift. Yeah. For the repertoire, no. Yeah. So in that sense, so I don't, I didn't use uh, his harmonies or the reference except for the end. Yeah. It has some things, but you know when I wrote the the fugue, you know it was weird. You know it, the the sensation it was something it, it's observing me or watching me. No, it was mm -hmm. uh, Maestro Bach and Maestro Ponce. Let's see what you can do. <laughs> so. The, the idea is I have, of course, the maestro, big maestro Bach, but I have also Ponce, which I made both things. It's a kind of fusion, if you like. And the counter subject, it's me. Yeah. A little dancey, no? Yeah. But I, de I decided to make, uh, to make this, this uh, eclectic technique in a true homage to them, no? Right, yeah. I think I think it was Jeremy who told me that it, you sort of viewed this old world subject and this new world syncopated dancey counter subject coming together, which wasn't and, easy at all to make it. I I don't think it would have been no. Uh, no, and you know the, the story of, of about the fugue is interesting because I I wrote it in the piano because you know you need to control. Uh, it's worse to, to to write tonal music because. You know, it's very, very difficult, no? Especially with that, that, that form in particular, no? Right, it, yeah. You need to control every, every voice well. And the thing, it, it was fantastic and I was very happy, but it didn't work in the guitar at all. <laughs> I tried and I say, so I rewrite it again. 
counterpoint on the guitar is just it's very difficult incredibly difficult it, it, this is a three voice fugue too right exactly. which is about as much as you can handle on the guitar i think just technically speaking yeah um so it's just incredibly difficult um yeah we'll talk maybe a little bit more about uh, about the fugue too um, so Ponce was someone who, you know, you were looking up to as a pianist and all of that. Um, I, in your composer bio, you talk about synthesizing various vernacular musical traditions. And this is something that I'm really curious about in this piece, because I don't think we've talked about this a whole ton. Um, what are some of the folky sources that you are drawing from? in the variations and in the fugue too um you know i know that um i think flamenco plays a role here but also i've heard you say that a lot of mexican popular music is very important to you in this piece as well and so talk to me a little bit about the folk and vernacular uh sources that you're drawing from in composing this piece well, I use the word folk, you know, you can understand it in many ways, but folk, uh, you know, um, in the in the in the essence, so the purity of the, the music material, it's uh, um, uh, the music which is inside the earth, you know, bloody heritage. I'm talking so all the musics you you contact with and you filter, no? In that sense, I use the, the word folklore. It, it's not a, not complex. It's just something that describes better the music I I, I compose. No abstract folklore. No, so it's, I, I I use sometimes um, uh, melodies or uh, or the sensation of that melody, but not necessarily. I use the, the a piece or or a fragment. No, it's just that feeling that. You know, it's like the inspiration of that was, but can be Turkish also. I'm talking about the ori the origin of the of the music, no, and the, the filter. I, I uh, so when I assimilate the music, then comes out the the new thing. Let's say it that way, no. It's a little complicated, but the, but it's not at the same time. If you listen to music and I say this is uh, uh, abstract folklore, abstract, uh, abstract folklore, you understand better. No, that's that's a, the that's a, the the definition, if you like to call it that way. But uh, uh, speaking about folia de España, it's a contradiction because folia is in Italian means craziness. No, so this is this is a theme. Right, for, it's, uh, it's where folly comes from in English, right? But it, it, in, in Italian, it's folia, it's uh, craziness. No. Yeah, yeah. To be a folle, it's to be crazy. Right. So and it, it's in Spanish. They they use that thing to impro improvise. It's basically like a you know uh, standard jazz yeah, melody. Yeah, ground you know? bass. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, so many composers wrote about that thing because uh, it was a, a pretext to improvise to 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 demonstrate your abilities or your skills as a composer or or improviser. No. Yeah, you know, I was actually really upset when my DMA committee didn't ask me about other pieces that use that theme because I read up on it. I was mm. I was anticipating them and I was ready to go with Murray and Brahms and all the all these other composers that had written on the folia and they didn't want to talk about that. <laughs> well, that's that's one of the things, but I I I would say um it's a, of course except for the few which is a clear homage to to Ponce and back. No? Mm -hmm. I would say it's a match to Spain more than Mexico. Mm. It, so the thing is, uh, my grandfather was Mexican, and I, I have my grand grand uh, fathers and uh, mothers. Uh, I have a couple of, of heritage from Spain, but uh, every Mexican has some sp Spanish heritage in many ways. No? Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't feel I, I am not Spanish, so I am Mexican, but I am also Spanish in, in, in the bottom, no? Because yeah. the language, the, the culture, many things, no? And, and at the same time, there, there is the, the Arab part, no? So the, the, mm -hmm. the, it's impossible to divide that, no? Yeah. 
because the guitar came to Mexico through Spain, yep. through the Arabic people. No? Yep. So that's uh, it's a kind of uh, they, they used to call the the cantos de de vuelta. So going and forward, no, forward and, and how you say it? and uh, rewind, no, mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so so you take the the the, the, sh the shank and you give them back in a modified. But you assimilate that thing and you give it back, no? Yeah. So it has everything to do with ancient music. So the the Renaissance music, Baroque music, Spanish music. Eh? Yeah. It has something about flamenco and all the filter with, with my uh, musical personality, no? So yeah. That's that's the main idea of the folia, the Spania, no? It's not in an European piece though because I am Mexican, no? But the thing is, I took all those ideas and filtered by my 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 per my personality, no? My my yeah. myself, and uh, it, it's a, a big homage to Spain. Like you can you can call it. it's in a certain way. It's also the uh, my first concerto is also has a, a kind of homage to Spain because the guitar came from from that, no? So, you know, yeah. there is a, there is an adagio, a funny adagio in Mexico, no? You say. Mexicans born, no, eat, have a child, play the guitar, and die. No, <laughs> everybody <laughs> plays the guitar. <laughs> it's it's a, a very important instrument in in our in our living. No, in yeah, our absolutely. Yeah, um, I also think it's just really great the way that you treat the theme throughout these improvisations. I think um, in a lot of theme and variations, where harmony kind of is the driver of the variation method but for you even though this is a ground base as like set of chord changes that's the way we tend to think of the folia um you really take that top line of the way that somebody would play the folia on the guitar and you say okay that's my theme not the chord changes um so you're really looking at this, even though we think of it, I think a lot of the times as a series of chord changes. Um, for you, it's that top line that's really driving the variations. And sometimes we hear that theme really clearly. And other times it's stretched out with all this other filigree around it that we almost don't even really quite know it's there. And yet you're so meticulous in the score about showing us where it is. And so um, let's just talk a little bit about about that and, you know, the way that you look at the theme and how you thought about um, structuring all these variations together. Well, let's talk about the theme. So as you can see, it's divided in two parts. So first goes to the dominant and the dominant to the tonic, right, in the in the original. So. It, uh, so it's it's divided in two parts, but but it's 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 one bunch of one one piece theme. No, I expanded a little in in the in the five uh, uh, the the, the, sec the second bim pam two pam plim to give it a little more air. No, it's like like a, a rubato, a written rubato, if you like. No. So I expanded a little that thing, but it becomes part of the theme. The, the number five in, in in my music, the, the, the queen to play and number five is very important. I tell you after why. But um, the 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 thing and and the colors of of uh, the antique music, for example, you have the D will be octavated the, the most of the time and many colors around, but also the modality like B flat be natural so if you use that mode or the other mode when you come back which it will be used in the fugue also no that the sense with the baroque and the renaissance together no musica ficta no you know it, yeah, it, it, it's yeah. fixed no it, yeah. that that technique so all the intervals are important in that thing no so for example you have a sort of dominant but it doesn't sound like dominant but it could sound no yeah yeah but it's twisted no you don't have the, the the so the important thing to understand is you have that thing very clear but the harmony doesn't match to the harmony we are used to listen no it's close 
no, to, to the modality more than the tonality, but it doesn't work like the uh, functionality of the, of the chords. So one chord doesn't drive you to another. It is like the purity of the, those intervals in an, in an abstract way. I, I, I don't know if it's clear. No, no it, it, it makes a lot of sense, I think. It, it has the, all the taste of the antique music. Yeah. Little things. Yeah. So um, going back a little bit to Ponce, I know that Dieter has performed concert programs where one half will be the Ponce and then the second half will be the Trigos. Um, how do you think that holds up in a concert? I mean, I've never played both pieces together. And actually one of the big criticisms that I've heard about Ponce's piece is like, who wants to listen to D minor for 25 minutes? Right? <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, good point, but um, do you think that the two pieces contrast each other enough that the program feels balanced or, you know, how, have you even seen both pieces performed side by side? I, I never did. So I, I, uh, the first time was with Dieter. No, I think it fit fantastic because, you know, I admire very much Ponce, uh, particularly that piece. No, I really love that piece. So for me, it's easy you know, to listen mm -hmm. three times. I don't, I don't care. But um, in my opinion, it works very well. And you know the other thing is we are two Mexican, well, different different uh, periods, different ages, sure. but two Mexican composers for the guitar. No? Yeah. And I like that very much that idea. But I think the pieces like if you don't know Ponce, you don't know me. The music fits well. Mm -hmm. You can play first mine and then Ponce or the, the opposite, and it works the same very well. Mm -hmm. It's a very virtuosistic piece also very complex piece but it, it's treated in a completely different manner no yeah and i think i think he he did a, a really abstract uh, composition it's you know it's, it's not a normal kind of variations you know it's uh starting for the thing we were talking about no right and uh you know and the length it's good enough so you can play a small piece before or or after yeah. that's great but you know if you play just the, the those two pieces, I think it will fit fantastic, like like balance. Yeah, yeah. I think I think if if you're not wanting to sit through two long folio variations pieces, then you're probably not going to come to that concert. But um, if as long as you understand that that's what you're getting into and you're into it, then I think that you know I, I, the more I hear you talk about it, I do think those two pieces work together. And you know, let's let's not forget in your piece that. There's several variations where that low D gets tuned up to E flat, and there's a lot of you know kind of harmonic variation. And because we want we want to uh, we we try to avoid the pub, to the audience to listen to D yeah for a long time too yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit um, about uh, you know what you're up to now. What do you have coming up in the near future? um you've just moved to columbus georgia starting a residency there so that's something we can talk about and you know other music that you're writing and things like that well i yes i i started uh, last uh, this very week so on, on the 8th august 8th a residency uh, for six months i will be here teaching composition and other courses uh, related with the uh, latin american composer and featuring mexican composers especially from 1950s pieces from 1950s. So we're talking about a lot of music, no? And the teaching compositions, I I, um, I, I have a commission for a, uh, for a piece for percussion and piano, a percussionist and piano. I will have a um, monographic concerto, which theater is coming to play. They will, um, I don't know if you hear my heard my my Richard Carey number seven for guitar and percussion is a brand new piece, a pandemic piece. You know, <laughs> wrote that in. Yeah, I haven't heard this one. I'll have to check that out. It's, uh, they they already uh, record the piece, um, um, but it will be there. So the, the, Davo, my my Ezra Pound songs, and uh, oh, what else? There is something else I don't remember. Duo, Dado, 
pound. There was something else. I don't remember now. No, because it, but it will be in, uh, in October or, or so. No. Yeah, exactly. But um, and um, after that, I have a, a, a couple of co uh, concerts I need to conduct. Now I, I'm going to to conduct in Orlando in September. Um, uh, Alterity Ensemble from Orlando. Okay. Then I uh, I go to Cervantino with an Italian group called uh, Icarus Ensemble. Mm. And then I need to conduct uh, the uh, Nuevo Leon Symphony Orchestra. I'm very, very happy to do because I will conduct the, the Honegger Three, Third Symphony, oh, cool. which I love that piece a lot. No, So uh, I have a, a new... Well, I, I, I didn't tell you um, about uh, this, this student, uh, Geraldo Nieto, Neto, commissioned me a, a new piece for solo guitar. Which is cool. something in the middle. It's like probably 17, 18 minutes. Okay. A little less longer. It's it's a, a, a unique piece. I don't want to talk about too much because. All right. I, I will give him the, the the probably he will he will premiere in, in in this fall. I don't I don't remember. Probably in October or November. No. It's it's a, it calls relojeria sensibles. So I don't I can't translate that. But it's like clock uh, clocky sensibilities or oh, okay something like that. No. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, I'm. I'm it's it's a, it's it's a, a very unique piece. A lot of polyrhythms and mm -hmm. you know. You'll see. Very cool. You'll see. Yeah. Um, I have a new commission for a for a, for, a, for a solo guitar piece. I will start in January. So right. you see the guitar. I I am not a guitar player. That's important. Right. Yeah. So, but I love to write for guitar. No, I have yeah. uh, written already many pieces, and it grows like that. You know, it's like you know why, but it went that way. No. Yeah. So but just. That was going to be my last question, but talk about writing for the guitar as a non-guitarist. How do you navigate the instrument? What are your strategies? What's your approach? Well, you know, I, I when I was a kid, my father teach me just the fundamental chords, you know, right. A major, a few things, and but I really don't play the guitar, no. Right. So I, uh, so I, I have uh, some rhythms, but you know, nothing complicated. I really don't don't feel I, I play guitar, but for right for guitar, you need to put the hands in the guitar. It's impossible otherwise for me. Mm. So you need to put your hands, even if you don't play, but you know, try to 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 make it fit because it's it's a very difficult instrument in my opinion. No. Yeah. This is this is right a for. theme on this channel talking with composers. It, it is complicated, uh, and uh, you know. It, you go to the piano and play something and it's okay, but you go to the guitar and it doesn't sound well. It's probably a, a thing uh, of harmonics. I don't know, but it's really hard. So it really is. Before I am, I, I write something. I need to try. It. You know, I I've been writing it for many years. Now I know more or less many things. Of course, no. Right. But for example, when I have doubts, immediately I put the hand on the guitar. I have when I compose and I have the guitar here. Uh -huh. on my side yeah and after finish the piece i always check twice or uh, three times whatever or four times just to be sure it will work of course no being a guitar player you can always make something real things no but yeah. but um, i try to be very accurate to that but but the the, the the problem with the guitar is you need to love it if you don't love it it won't work in my opinion mm -hmm. And I do love the guitar. Yeah. Probably because I, I, I heard my father playing or I don't know. It's a, it's a, an instrument very close to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can we can tell with all the music that you've written for it and the amount of dedication that you have put into writing for the instrument. Um, so thank you so much for all the great music. Thanks for talking about the Folia today. And um, the album is called From a Dream. It'll be out on Frameworks Recordings, September 2nd, 2022, featuring Juan Trigos and other composers that are going to be featured on this channel as well. Thank you again, Juan, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, I'm very happy.